ACC 121, Study Session 1, Basic Concepts of Bookkeeping. Introduction. In this session, you will learn more about bookkeeping as an essential part of accounting, how it helps in providing records for all transactions and determining the profit of any business as it has been treated in the introduction to accounting. We shall also look at the differences between bookkeeping and accounting and review various books that are kept. Concept of Bookkeeping. A source document is an original record containing the details to substantiate a transaction entered in an accounting system. In the earlier study, we look at the various source documents such as sales invoices, receipts, credit notes, debit notes, S, etc. These source documents form the basis for entry into the books of called original entries. Books of original entry. Books of original entry refer to the accounting journals in which business transactions are initially recorded. The information in these books is then summarized and posted into ledgers, from which financial statements are produced. As we know, books of original entries are the books in which we first record the transactions. Purchase Journal or Purchase Day Book A purchase journal is used to record the entries or transactions for credit purchases. Remember that the purchase journal is only used to record entries for credit purchases, s not for cash purchase and purchase return. Sales Return Journal or Sale Return Day Book when a business makes sales to customers, it's possible that some customers will return the sold goods because of defects, substandard goods, or any other reason. When a customer returns the sold goods, it is recorded in the sales journal, and from the sales journal, it is transferred to the sales ledger account. A sales journal is used to record the entries or transactions for sales return or return inward. Purchase Return Journal or Purchase Return Day Book When we purchase goods for the purpose of reselling them, it's likely that some of the goods would be defective and therefore, we return these defective goods to the supplier. When we return goods to the supplier, we record these purchases return in the Purchase Return Journal. Purchase Return Journal is used to record the entries or transactions for purchases return. The simple double entry for credit purchase. For debit, it's creditor supplier's name slash description. For credit, it's purchases return or return outward. Double entry system. In accounting, we have a dual aspect concept that demands that in every transaction there must be a giver and a receiver. For every transaction, two parties are involved a giver and a receiver. Thus, the double entry principle as postulated by Luca Pacioli in 1494 states that for every debit entry, there is a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Note. Every transaction either increases or decreases assets, liabilities, or capital. Thus. 1. To increase an asset account we make debit entry. 2. To decrease an asset account we make credit entry. 3. To increase a liability slash capital account, we make a credit entry, and 4. To increase a liability slash capital account, we make a debit entry. These are documents used to capture details of transactions at the origin and subsequent recording of the transactions will be based on the details in the source document. Examples of source documents are discussed above. These are books in which transactions are first recorded on a daily basis from the source documents and from which transfers are made at suitable period intervals to the relevant accounts in the ledger. Ledger A ledger is a book that contains the accounts for the transactions of a business entity. It is written up periodically and it is the ultimate destination of all entries in the subsidiary books. It is also known as the main book or principal book of account. Sales Ledger The book, or set of books, in which the personal accounts of credit customers are kept. A credit customer is also called a debtor. The balance of a customer's account shows the amount that the customer owes the business. Therefore, the total balance in the sales ledger is the total amount the business is owned by its credit customers. This amount is called trade receivables or accounts receivables. Trade receivables are shown as a current assets in the balance sheet. Purchases Ledger The book, or set of books, in which the personal accounts of credit suppliers are kept. A credit supplier is also called a creditor. The balance of a supplier's account shows the amount that the business owes the supplier. Therefore, the total balance in the purchases ledger is the total amount the business owes to its credit suppliers. This amount is called trade payables or accounts payables. Trade payables are shown as a current liability in the balance sheet. The cash book. The cash book is a subsidiary book and also a ledger that records all cash transactions of a business organization over a particular period of time. The cash book can be a single column cash book, two column cash book, double, or three columns cash book. 
A single column cash book is a cash book that records all physical cash transactions excluding checks. Summary for study session 1. In this study session, please note the following. 1. A source document is the original record containing the details to substantiate a transaction entered in an accounting system. In the earlier study, we look at various source documents such as sales invoices, receipts, credit notes, debit notes, etc. 2. Most of the big companies are recording their business transactions in one journal and the posting of the same to the concerned ledger accounts is our very difficult task and which require more clerical labor also. 3. To avoid such kinds of difficulties most business organizations are subdividing the journal into subsidiary journals or subsidiary books. Subsidiary books are those books of original entry in which similar nature of transactions are recorded in chronological order. Bookkeeping, also called record keeping, can be thought of as the financial information infrastructure of an entity as earlier said. The financial information base should be complete, accurate, and timely. Study Session 2, Introduction to Manual, Mechanical, and Electronic Systems of Bookkeeping. Introduction. As you would have learned before now, the bookkeeping process leads to the generation of accounting information. The bookkeeper usually captures information relating to transactions in business organizations in his book. Thereafter this information is converted to the form it would be more meaningful to owners of business entities, given their business decisions. The first stage of the generation of accounting information is the extraction of data from source documents. Source documents are those documents that describe the transactions and events that occurred in the organization. These documents can be either in hard copy or electronic copy. Examples of source documents are bank statements, checks, purchase orders, receipts, etc. Thereafter, the captured data are journalized and posted to ledgers by applying the double entries principle. From different ledgers balances, a trial balance is drawn up. Bookkeeping involves the various stages of the information generation process from the recording of transactions captured in source documents to the drawing up of a trial balance. These stages could be affected by manual, mechanical, or electronic means. General Overview of Bookkeeping Business activities of profit-making organizations are subsumed in monetary transactions. Many of these activities occur on a daily basis that to have a glimpse of them after some time would be impossible. A business organization is therefore expected to record the business activities on a daily basis so as to ease the determination of the outcome of such activities in the future. The information that owners or managements of business entities need comes mostly from records keeping on each and every transaction that takes place in the organization. A transaction is an economic event or activity quantifiable in monetary units between a business unit and other parties. Accounting is required to account for transactions when it is expressed in monetary terms. In other words, wherever money is involved, accounting is required to account for it. Objectives of Bookkeeping Bookkeeping leads to the production of permanent records of transactions undertaken in an organization. The financial health of a firm can be adduced from its records of assets and abilities on a particular date. The profitability of an organization is measured from the data provided by the record of transactions. Information on an organization's obligations and assets can be disclosed in the records of transactions. The bookkeeping process provides up-to-date information about the organization. The bookkeeping process provides the information needed to determine the state of financial position organizations at a different interval. Systems of Bookkeep The purpose of bookkeeping and accounting is to provide an accurate and succinct record of the transaction of every transaction that takes place in the organization. In pursuit of the purpose of booking keeping organizations would normally design their booking keeping system to meet their record keeping needs. In line with this, bookkeeping systems in organizations can be manual, mechanized, D and electronic bookkeeping systems. Manual bookkeeping system. The manual booking keeping system is almost phasing out in today's business world, as many organizations have gone digitalized. The bookkeeping process under this system is achieved with pen, ink, paper, and human mental exertion. The main features of the manual bookkeeping system are that each step in the bookkeeping process is achieved by a human hand and it is most suitable in an organization with a low volume of transactions. The manual bookkeeping system is a key to the bookkeeping system of many organizations as the extent the electronics and mechanized bookkeeping systems can be used as a factor of how well these organizations understand the nitty-gritty of the working of the manual bookkeeping systems. Mechanized System of Bookkeeping the idea behind the use of the machine in bookkeeping and accounting is not far different from the reasons it was introduced in the factories. 
that is to reduce the manpower and the possibility of human errors. Mechanized bookkeeping implies the use of machines to accomplish the routine process of double-entry bookkeeping, like posting and balancing of ledgers, writing up of cash book, and journalizing of data. Mechanization of booking keeping system would not be adding much value to an organization when it not possible to utilize the time saves on manual operation in other profitable ways. Where the numbers of transactions are small, mechanization would also be unsuitable. Mechanization of the bookkeeping process would be suitable when there are large transactions that could be classified into different similar groups. Electronic system of bookkeeping. The electronic system of booking in an organization actualizes bookkeeping tasks with the aid of a computer. In the electronic system, computer software such as Sage, Peachtree, and Express Accounts accomplishes bookkeeping tasks of posting into ledgers, balancing the ledger, and journalizing of entries. With the electronic system of bookkeeping in an organization bookkeeping activities are executed very fast and with little or no error. Summary for Study Session 2 In this study session, please note the following. 1. A business organization is expected to record the business activities on a daily basis so as to ease the determination of the outcome of such activities in the future. 2. The main functions of the accounting process are recording transactions, analyzing the transactions recorded, and presenting the summary of the transactions. The recording function of accounting is known as bookkeeping. 3. In pursuit of the purpose of booking keeping organizations would normally design their booking keeping system to meet their record keeping needs. 4. Bookkeeping process under this system is achieved with pen, ink, paper, and human mental exertion. The main features of the manual bookkeeping system are that each step in the bookkeeping process is achieved by a human hand and it is most suitable in an organization with a low volume of transactions. 5. Mechanized bookkeeping implies the use of machines to accomplish the routine process of double-entry bookkeeping, like posting and balancing of ledgers, writing up of cash book, and journalizing of data. Study Session 3, Further Discussion on Trial Balance Introduction Prior to the preparation of the financial statement, it is necessary to ascertain the accuracy of the entries that were recorded in the ledgers. This can be done by drawing up a list of ledger balances. You will recall that when applying the double entry principle, every credit entry has a corresponding debit entry, and also every debit entry has a corresponding credit entry. Therefore, the total of all the debits recorded in the account should equal the total of all the credits. Meaning of trial balance. A trial balance is thus defined as the list of balances extracted from different ledges primarily to show the arithmetic accuracy of accounting postings. This, therefore, means that if accounting entries are properly posted and summed up, both sides of the trial balance are expected to be equal in sum. Thus, a trial balance establishes the arithmetic accuracy of the entries posted to different ledges. Importance of trial balance. It is the easiest way of verifying the arithmetical accuracy of entries posted to the ledger. If the trial balances agree, it is an indication that the accounts are correctly drawn up, but this may not be conclusive proof. It aids in the preparation of the final account. Without a proper written up trial balance, it might be very difficult to prepare an accurate financial statement. Correction of accounting errors. In our discussion on the trial balance, it was established that both sides of the trial balance would agree if the double entry principle is correctly applied. This, therefore, can note that an accountant can draw up a trial balance whose credit and debit totals do tally. When this happens it can be stated, the accountant has not meticulously applied the principle of double entry. This can amount to errors in accounting entries. Errors in accounting entries are almost inevitable when the volume of transactions recorded by accounting is large. For the accounting records to give a true and fair view of the operations of the business enterprise, errors in the book of account should be located and corrected as soon as possible. It is in tandem with this, we can state that the agreement of both sides of the trial balance does not imply the absence of errors in accounting records. In this session, the emphasis would be laid on those errors that would not affect the trial balance. Errors that do not affect trial balance and their corrections. As earlier be stated that the agreement of the two columns of the trial balance is not conclusive proof of the accuracy of accounts. There may still be some accounting errors. These errors may not be instantly traced but may be detected at a much later stage. These are errors that cannot affect the trial balance. They could be in any of the following forms. 1. The error of omission. 2. The error of commission. 3. The error of principle. 4. The error of original entry. 5. Compensating error. 6. Complete reversal of entry. 
Error of omission. Accountants may sometimes in error omit transactions completely or record them partially. This type of accounting error is called error or omission. When an accounting record is partially omitted, it could lead to the disagreement of two columns of a trial balance. More partially omitted accounting errors would be discussed when considering errors that can affect the trial balance. For instance, goods purchased on credit are not recorded in purchases book, or a discount allowed to a customer was not posted to discount AC in the ledger. In the first case, it is a complete omission. Therefore, both debit and credit are affected by the same amount. Therefore, it does not affect the trial balance. Error of Commission The errors that occurred when a transaction is posted to the wrong account within the correct class of account is called error of commission. If for instance a credit sale of N3000 from Mrs. ABK is correctly debited in the purchase account, but wrongly credited to the account of Mrs. ABK. Error of Principle An error of principle is said to have been committed when a transaction of a particular class of account is posted to another class of account. For example, expenses on the maintenance of vehicles are posted into the fixed asset account. Error of original entry. This is the error as the result of recording an incorrect amount in the subsidiary account and the same incorrect amount is correctly posted to the individual accounts. It could also be referred to as transposition error. For example, if the credit sale of trading stock of 1,200 Naira is wrongly recorded in the sale day book as 1,020 Naira and is posted to both the sales account and debtor account as 1,020 Nairas. Error of complete reversal of entries. In this type of error, the correct amount is posted to the correct set of accounts but on the wrong side. For example, the account that should be debited is credited and the corresponding is debited. These various types cannot affect the trial balance. These errors can be rectified in the set of accounts involved or through the journal. To rectify in the journal, the debit item comes before the item that is credited. To add flesh to our discussion on the correction of errors in accounting, we take a simple illustration at this juncture. Errors that affect trial balance. As has been pointed out in our earlier class, these errors would make the two columns of the trial balance disagree. These types of errors normally occurred on one side of the account. These errors span from the partial reversal of posting, single entries and wrong totally affected in one side of the account. Rectifying these types requires the use of a suspense account. The suspense account is an account that accommodates any differences in the trial balance pending when it is rectified. A suspense account is open to make the two sides of the trial balance equal temporarily. The reason for the error has to be investigated, the suspense account would fizzle out if the source of difference is found out, otherwise, it would be featured in the statement of financial position as a current asset or liability. Summary for Study Session 3 In this study session, please note the following. 1. A trial balance is thus defined as the list of balances extracted from different ledges primarily to show the arithmetic accuracy of accounting postings. This, therefore, means that if accounting entries are properly posted and summed up, both sides of the trial balance are expected to be equal in sum. 2. It is the easiest way of verifying the arithmetical accuracy of entries posted to the ledger. If the trial balances agree, it is an indication that the accounts are correctly drawn up, but this may not be conclusive proof. 3. Errors in accounting entries are almost inevitable when the volume of transactions recorded by accounting is large. For the accounting records to give a true and fair view of the operations of the business enterprise, errors in the book of account should be located and corrected as soon as possible. These errors may not be instantly traced but may be detected at a much later stage. These are errors that cannot affect the trial balance. Study Session 4, Concepts of Business Organization Introduction A man by nature is very adventurous, this explains why he hunts and kills other animals for food exploits fruits and roots of the trees for various uses. In an attempt to improve his well-being using his intellect, plan, organize, coordinate and control his activities. In an attempt to develop and satisfy his need, he works very hard and in some cases man work in groups of people with like minds or interests. This scenario gives rise to the different types of business around the world. Concepts of Business Organization Since we are only concerned with the economic nature of man, we will consider the nature of different business entities as created by man for his survival, growth, and expansion. Now that you have decided to start your own business, you will have to determine what business structure or form of organization suits your needs. Types of business organization and their advantages and disadvantages. The structure of your business will depend on whether you want to run your business yourself or with a partner or associates. There are three types of business structures, sole proprietorships, partnerships, and corporations. Sole Proprietorship 
With this type of business organization, you would be fully responsible for all debts and obligations related to your business and all profits would be yours alone to keep. As the sole owner of the business, a creditor can make a claim against your personal or business assets to pay off any debt. Advantages 1. Quick decision making. 2. Relatively low cost to start your business. 3. Direct control of decision making. 4. Minimal working capital required to start up. 5. All benefit in turn profit belongs to him. 6. Tax advantages if your business is not doing well, for example, deducting your losses from your personal income, lower tax bracket when profits are low, and so on. Disadvantages 1. Unlimited liability, if you have business debts, personal assets would be used to pay off the debt too. Income would be taxable at your personal rate and, if your business is profitable, this may put you in a higher tax bracket. 3. Lack of continuity for your business, if you need to be absent. 4. Difficulty raising capital on your own due to lack of collateral security of trust. Partnerships. A partnership is a good business structure if you want to carry on a business with a partner and you do not wish to incorporate your business. A partnership is a business that exists between two or more persons carrying on a business in common for the purpose of profit making. With a partnership, financial resources are combined and put into the business. You can establish the terms of your business with your partner and protect yourself in case of a disagreement or dissolution by drawing up a specific business agreement. As partners, you would share in the profits of your business according to the terms of your agreement. There are three types of partnership business and they include general partner, sleeping or dormant partner, and limited partners. General partner. This is a partner who is actively involved in the management of the business and who is on limited liability with respect to the debts of the partnership. This means that if the assets of the business are not enough to pay the debts of creditors, the personal assets of the general partner may be used to settle the debts. Sleeping or dormant partner. This is a general partner who does not participate in the management of the business but nonetheless has unlimited liability just like any other general partner. Limited partner. This is a partner that is involved in the management of the business. But his liability is limited to the capital invested by him and the business. This means that in the event of the business being unable to settle its debt the limited partner can only lose the capital invested in the business, the personal assets cannot be used to offset the liability of the business. When establishing a partnership, you should have a partnership agreement drawn up with the assistance of a lawyer, to ensure that 1. The interest of all the partners is protected. 2. That you have clearly established the terms of the partnership with regards to issues like profit and lose sharing, dissolving the partnership, and more. 3. That you meet the legal requirements for a limited partnership, if applicable. Partnership deed or agreement. In order to reduce the areas of disagreement among the partners to the barest minimum, it is advisable for persons going into a partnership to have a written agreement or partnership deed which specifies the terms of formation, operation, and dissolution of the partnership. This partnership deed or agreement should specify among others. 1. The nature of the business. 2. The types and number of partners. 3. The duties of each partner. 4. The initial capital contributed by each partner. 5. The rate of interest to be charged on the contribution capital. 6. The rate of interest on the loan from the partner. 7. The rate of interest on drawings by the partners. 8. The salaries to be paid to any of the partners. 9. The basis of sharing profit or losses of the partnership. 10. The conditions for admission or retirement of a partner. Advantages. Below are the advantages. 1. Startup costs would be shared equally with you and your partner. 2. Equal share in the management, profits, and assets. 3. Tax advantage, if income from the partnership is low or loses money, you and your partner include your share of the partnership in your individual tax return disadvantages. Below are the disadvantages. 1. Similar to sole proprietorship, as there is no legal difference between you and your business. 2. Unlimited liability. 3. Possible development of conflict between you and your partner. 4. You are held financially responsible for business decisions made by your partner, for example, contracts that are broken. Corporations, companies and other type of business structure is incorporation. Incorporation can be done at the federal or provincial slash territorial level. When you incorporate your business, 
it is considered to be a legal entity that is separate from the shareholders. As a shareholder of a corporation, you will not be personally liable for the debts, obligations, or acts of the corporation. When making such decisions, it is always wise to seek legal advice before incorporating. Advantages Below are the advantages. 1. Limited liability, that is limited to the amount of share owned. 2. Ownership is transferable. 3. Continuous existence. 4. Separate legal entity. 5. Easier to raise capital. 6. Possible tax advantages Taxes may be lower for an incorporated business. Disadvantages Below are the disadvantages. 1. A corporation is closely regulated. 2. More expensive to incorporate than a partnership or sole proprietorship. 3. Extensive corporate records required, including shareholder and director meetings, and documentation filed annually with the government. 4. Possible problem with the residency of directors. Summary for Study Session 4 In this study session, please note the following. 1. The structure of your business will depend on whether you want to run your business yourself or with a partner or associates as we said earlier. 2. There are three types of business structures, sole proprietorships, partnerships, corporations each and every one depending on the nature of the capital formation. 3. For a man to satisfy his need he works very hard and in some cases man work in groups of people with like minds or interest. 4. As the sole owner of the business, a creditor can make a claim against your personal or business assets to pay off any debt. 5. A partnership is a business that exists between two or more persons carrying on a business in common for the purpose of profit making. With a partnership, financial resources are combined and put into the business. Study Session 5 The Accounting Treatment of Various Business Organizations Introduction the business organization Binet, sole trader, partnership, or corporation is usually recognized by law which will be the subject of this session, because each business must prepare their final account to keep the business in operation and this accounting system must be prepared because of the capital structure. The accounting treatment of various business organizations. The accounting treatment of a sole trader is very simple because of the nature of the capital structure. Since the business is solely funded by the sole trader, he decides what to do with profit and how to offset losses. As for the sole trader, the accounting system is required by law unlike the partnership and the corporation. The sole trader subscribes to all his equity capital and so all income belongs to him the business has no distinct legal entity. And their financial statement, statement of comprehensive income and statement of financial position, is not much different from that of the corporation and partnership they are all compiled in the normal way. In the partnership, the accountant is interested in the partner's wishes in relation to capital and profit, that is, whether partner's capital is to be fixed, whether partners are to earn a salary or not, whether interest is to be paid or charged on drawings and the ratio in which partners are to share profit, loss of goodwill. The accountant should also be guided in this regard by the partnership agreement. Their legal requirement. Establishing an enterprise entails first a decision on what you want to do, and how. Then, you must decide on the form of the enterprise. Would it be a partnership, a sole proprietorship, or a company? Every enterprise in Nigeria is required by law to be registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission and to comply with the relevant provisions of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 1990. The CAC shall register the memorandum and articles of association, unless in the opinion. 1. They do not comply with the provisions of the Companies Act, or 2. The business which the company is to carry on, or 3. The objects for which it is formed, or 4. Any of them, are illegal, or 5. Any of the subscribers to the memorandum and articles is incompetent or disqualified, or 6. There is a non-compliance with the requirements of any other law relating to the registration and incorporation of companies, or 7. The proposed name conflicts with or is likely to conflict with an existing trademark or business name registered in Nigeria. Summary for Study Session 5 In this study session, please note the following. 1. As you will no doubt agree with me, that it is very relevant at this point in time in the life of we as individuals and also as corporate entities, the conviction is that with the dawn of democratic governance in Nigeria and the ongoing economic liberalization program of the government, this millennium surely holds a lot in stock for the imaginative and hard-working small and medium-scale entrepreneur. 2. 
we look at the various legal means by which a small and or medium scale business person can exist and the legal implication of these various ways and means of doing business. Study Session 6, Definition, Reasons, and Methods of Depreciation Introduction When an organization buys an asset, the asset cannot last forever. As the organization uses the asset, the value and capability of the asset reduce. The cost of the asset is a capital expenditure because its useful life spans more than one accounting period. However, the matching concept advocates that revenue generated within a period must be matched against the cost incurred in generating the same. Thus, the portion of the asset used within an accounting period must be written off as an expense against the revenue that was generated. This can only be done by depreciating the asset. Definition and Related Concepts of Depreciation Depreciation is the reduction in the value of an asset arising from wear and tear, passage of time, obsolescence, etc. It can also be defined, as the systematic and periodic allocation of the historical cost or residual value of a depreciable asset over its estimated useful life. Providing for depreciation is in line with the matching concept that advocates matching revenue generated within a period against the cost incurred in generating the same. There are other related terms that are synonymous with depreciation. These terms include depletion and amortization. Depletion refers to the depreciation of a wasting asset. A wasting asset is one that is consumed in the process of operation or usage. Examples include coal from a coal mines or oil out of an oil well. Amortization, on the other hand, is the user with respect to fictitious and intangible assets such as patents and copyrights. Other related concepts include Depreciable asset A depreciable asset is one with the following characteristics. Useful life of more than one year. Acquired primarily for use in the production of goods and services and not intended for resale in the ordinary course of business. And Limited useful life. An asset must have the above characteristics to be regarded as depreciable. For example, land, excluding land whose contents are exploited for commercial purposes such as gold mines, coal mine, and oil wells, is not regarded as depreciable because it does not possess the third characteristic. This is the reason why depreciation is not charged on it and not necessarily because it appreciates in value. Residual value. This is also termed scrap or salvage value. It is the estimated amount recoverable from the disposal of a fixed asset after the expiration of its useful economic life. Obsolescence. Assets may become useless even before the expiration of their useful life. This is a result of what we call obsolescence. It is usually caused by changes in technology, production requirements, or consumer taste. Depreciable value. This refers to the book value of a depreciable asset that an organization can allocate in the future through depreciation. Methods of depreciation. There are various methods of depreciation. One way is by looking at the nature of the amount charged as depreciation annually. Another is to look at it from the passage of time or output usage. Irrespective of the grouping, the following are the methods for depreciation. 1. Straight line method. 2. Reducing balance method. 3. Sum of the digits method. 4. Depletion method. 5. Revaluation method. 6. Annuity method. 7. Sinking fund method. 8. Service hour method. 9. Productivity output method. 10. Machine hour rate method. 11. Double declining method. 12. Group depreciation method. 13. Insurance policy method. For the purpose of this course, we shall restrict our discussion to the first three, three. Straight line method. This is also called fixed installment method. Under this method, the costless scrap value of a fixed asset is allocated equally over the years of its useful life. That is, depreciation is charged evenly every year throughout the estimated life of an asset. Depreciation is calculated as Depreciation equals CS N Where C equals cost of the asset S equals estimated scrap value and N equals useful life of the asset Summary for Study Session 6 In this study session, please note the following 1. As you will no doubt agree with me that it is very relevant at this point in time in the life of we as individuals and also as corporate entities, the conviction is that with the dawn of democratic governance in Nigeria and the ongoing economic liberalization program of the government, this millennium surely holds a lot in stock for the imaginative and hard-working small and medium-scale entrepreneur. 
we look at the various legal means by which a small and or medium scale business person can exist and the legal implication of these various ways and means of doing business. Study Session 7, Meaning of Inventory and Inventory Valuation Introduction This session shall look at the meaning of inventory, we shall consider the definition of inventory, the types of inventory, the provisions of the International Accounting Standards Board in relation to inventories. This session also looks at the reason for inventory valuation and the importance of inventory valuation to an enterprise. Definition of Inventory Inventories are current assets held for sale in the ordinary course of business, in the process of production for such sale, or in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. The pricing and valuation of inventory are very important in an organization because the cost of production is directly influenced by the price at which the costs of inventories are issued for production purposes. Therefore it is necessary that the issue price of the inventory should be realistic and consistent. When the pricing system of inventory is realistic and reliable, the basis for inventory valuation becomes easy and justifiable. The profit figure has been affected by the value of the closing inventory because the higher the closing inventory the higher the reported profit in an organization. Types of Inventories Inventories as earlier stated are items of value held for use or sale by an enterprise and usually comprise of the following. Raw Materials – These are inventories used in the production process. Work in Progress – WIP – These are inventories in various stages of manufacturing, but haven't yet undergone their full production cycle. Finished Goods these are inventories completely ready for use or sale. Provisions of I. A. S. 2 Inventories Below are some provisions made by International Accounting Standards Board in relation to inventories. Inventory shall be measured at the lower cost in net realizable value and net selling price. The cost of inventory shall comprise all costs of purchase, costs of conversion, and other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition. Examples of costs excluded from the cost of inventories and recognized as expenses in the period in which they are incurred are Abnormal amounts of wasted materials, labor, or other production costs Storage cost, unless those costs are necessary for the production process before a further production stage Administrative overheads that do not contribute to bringing inventories to their present location and condition, and selling cost Summary for Study Session 7 In this study session, please note the following 1. Inventories are current assets held for sale in the ordinary course of business, in the process of production for such sale, or in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. 2. When the pricing system of inventory is realistic and reliable, the basis for inventory valuation becomes easy and justifiable. The profit figure has been affected by the value of the closing inventory because the higher the closing inventory the higher the reported profit in an organization. Three. The net amount an enterprise expects to realize from the sale of inventory in the ordinary course of business is referred to as net realizable. 4. Inventory shall be measured at the lower cost in net realizable value and net selling price. 5. The cost of inventory shall comprise all costs of purchase, costs of conversion, and other costs incurred in bringing the inventories to their present location and condition. Study Session 8 Methods of Accounting for Inventories and Inventory Valuation Introduction In this session, you will learn the various methods of accounting for inventories, which are the perpetual or continuous inventory accounting method and the periodic inventory accounting method. We shall explain the meaning of the above methods and how it is applied in business enterprises. We shall also look at the methods of inventory valuation and how it is applied in business enterprises. Methods of Accounting for Inventories the two most widely used methods of accounting for inventories are 1. The perpetual or continuous inventory accounting method and 2. The periodic inventory accounting method Perpetual inventory accounting method As the name implies, this method requires accounting records to show the amount of inventory on hand at all times. It involves a continuous physical count of inventories. When applying the perpetual inventory accounting method, a separate account is maintained in the subsidiary ledger for each inventory on the ground, and the account is updated each time inventories are received or taken out. This method is mostly used in the business enterprise trades in expensive commodities of a limited range. Periodic Inventory Accounting Method Under this system, sales are recorded as they occur but the inventory is not updated. However, 
A physical inventory is always taken at the end of an accounting year in order to determine the cost of goods sold for the period, and the cost of the remaining balance of goods. Also, within the framework of periodic inventory accounting, the purchase of goods for resale is recognized in the purchases account. If the purchase is made in cash, the cash account will be credited while the purchases account will be debited with the amount involved. But if the goods are purchased on credit, the account trade accounts payable or trade creditors account is credited. Methods of Inventory Evaluation The three most commonly used methods of inventory valuation are 1. First-in-first-out method 2. Last-in-first-out method and 3. Weighted Average Price Method Other inventory valuation methods according to SAS4 include 1. Specific Identification Method 2. Standard Cost Method 3. Base Inventory Method 4. Latest Purchase Price Method 5. Adjusted Selling Price Slash Retail Inventory Method First in First Out, FIFO, Method The FIFO method of inventory valuation is based on the assumption that goods are sold in the order in which they were purchased. Hence, the items of inventories purchased first are also sold first. Under this method, inventories at the end of the accounting period are valued at the cost of the last purchase made. And in a period of rising prices, inflation, the value of closing inventory and by implication the value of gross profit are overstated and vice versa. Last in first out, LIFO, method. The LIFO method of inventory valuation is the exact opposite of the FIFO method. This method is based on the assumption that goods are sold in the reversed order in which they were purchased. Hence, the items of inventories purchased last become the first to be sold. Under this method, inventories at the end of a particular period are valued at the cost of the earliest batches of purchase made. And in a period of rising prices, inflation, the value of closing inventory and by implication the value of gross profit are understated and vice versa. Weighted Average Price Method The weighted average price method of inventory valuation is based on the assumption of the similar nature of the items of inventory for resale. Under this method, issues of inventories are priced at a weighted average value which is obtained by dividing the total value of goods on hand at a particular date by the total units of goods on hand as at the same date. The weighted average price slash value is always calculated whenever new purchases are made. Other Methods of Inventory Valuation Other methods of inventory valuation not commonly used are briefly explained below. Specific Identification Method under this method, items of inventory specifically identified by particular features are assigned their values. Standard cost method. Under this method, the value of closing inventory is computed based on a predetermined cost. For this method to reflect the actual cost, a system of allocation of variances as well as a review of the standard cost must be in constant use. Base inventory method. Under this method, a minimum level of inventory carried at the historical cost of acquisition, is held at all times. However, any additions to or excesses over the base inventory are carried at different bases such as FIFO, LIFO, ETC. Latest Purchase Price Method Under this method, the value of closing inventory is determined by applying the cost of the latest item purchased to the number of goods on hand. Adjusted Selling Price Method this is a method of determining the value of closing inventory in which the historical cost of inventory is estimated by applying the gross profit margin to the selling price of items or group of items in inventory. The amount so determined is then deducted from the selling price to arrive at the value of the inventory. Summary for Study Session 8 In this Study Session 8, please note the following. 1. The two most widely used methods of accounting for inventories are a. The perpetual or continuous inventory accounting method, and B. The periodic inventory accounting method. 2. Perpetual or continuous inventory accounting method This method requires accounting records to show the amount of inventory on hand at all times. It involves a continuous physical count of inventories. 3. Periodic inventory accounting method, here, sales are recorded as they occur but the inventory is not updated. However, a physical inventory is always taken at the end of an accounting year in order to determine the cost of goods sold for the period, and the cost of the remaining balance of goods. 4. The FIFO method of inventory valuation is based on the assumption that goods are sold in the order in which they were purchased. Hence, the items of inventories purchased first are also sold first. The LIFO method of inventory valuation is the exact opposite of the FIFO method. This method is based on the assumption that goods are sold in the reversed order in which they were purchased.
Study Session 9, The Effects of Error from Inventory Valuation Introduction In this session, we shall be discussing the effects of error from inventory valuation on final accounts, factors affecting the choice of inventory valuation method, the need for accuracy of inventory valuation, why the LIFO method is prohibited under IASIFRS also, we shall be looking at inventory taking after the statement of financial position date. Effects of Error from Inventory Valuation on Final Accounts Any error made while valuing inventories makes the information reported in the final accounts untrue. Thus the effects of any possible error that can occur in inventory valuation on the items of the trading and income statement for any accounting period. Factors Affecting the Choice of Inventory Valuation Method You should observe from the summary of the calculations done in illustration for that the results especially the gross profit differ because of the different methods that were used. However, the ultimate goal of any enterprise carrying out inventory valuation should be to give a true and fair view of its state of affairs as at the statement of financial position date and the trend of the business trading results. Therefore, the following are some of the factors affecting the choice of inventory valuation method. Convenience The method chosen may not be the best for an enterprise in terms of profit calculation but due to its simplicity, such a method may be adopted. Taxation Since tax is paid out of the profit of an enterprise, the higher the profit, the higher the tax to be paid. A business enterprise that does not want to pay a higher tax may adopt a method of inventory valuation that will result in a lesser profit. Ignorance This might be on the part of the staff in charge of an organization's inventory management. He or she might not appreciate the fact that there is more than one possible method of valuing inventory. Better still, he might just adopt the method he knows best and leaves others that he is ignorant of. Custom slash tradition some trades or industries may have a particular method of inventory valuation and as such, any business within such industries must also adopt such a method. This might be for easier comparisons of enterprises within the same industry. Consistency In line with the concept of consistency, a business enterprise may choose a particular method in valuing its inventories year in, year out. This will help the business enterprise in making comparisons between different periods and by extension, help in making future plans. Lack of information. This may result from improper inventory records, which will affect the valuation of an organization's inventories using methods such as the last in first out, LIFO, method and the weighted average price method. Auditor's recommendation. Auditors are accountants who review the accounting records and financial statements of an organization in order to report whether or not the financial statements present a true and fair view of the financial performance and position of an organization. Occasionally, Auditors may recommend a particular inventory method to an organization different from the one being used by such an organization. The organization may, therefore, adhere to the recommendation of the auditor. Compliance with Accounting Standards Paragraph 25 of IAS 2, Inventories, provides that the cost of inventory shall be assigned by using either the FIFO method or the weighted average price method. In compliance with such provision, an organization may choose to adopt either of the two methods, while disregarding every other method that may exist. The need for accuracy of inventory valuation Having an accurate valuation of inventory is so important because the reported value of inventory will affect 1. The cost of goods sold, gross profit, and net profit on the trading and income statement. 2. The number of current assets, working capital, total assets and owner's equity reported on the statement of financial position. 3. An incorrect inventory valuation will cause at least two trading and income statements to be incorrect. This is because, the closing inventory of one accounting period will automatically become the opening inventory in the subsequent accounting period. Why LIFO method is prohibited under IAS IFRS after the revision of IAS 2 inventories, in 2013, the LIFO method of inventory valuation was explicitly prohibited to be used by organizations complying with the provisions of the International Accounting Standards, IAS, to prepare and present financial statements. Before this revision, the LIFO method was available as an allowable alternative to be used by enterprises in valuing inventory. The main reason for excluding the LIFO method is because the International Financial Reporting Standards, I.F.R.S., shifted its focus from the income statement to the statement of financial position, SOFP, requires that the figures in the statement of financial position should be according to the present market conditions i.e. it should provide the most relevant information with respect to time, and if the statement of financial position items is measured according to up-to-date information only then the financial position can be ascertained reliably. 
Inventory taking after the statement of financial position date. Inventory taking is the physical counting of on-hand inventory in order to ascertain the quantities and conditions of items of inventory. Inventory taking is a common requirement of a periodic inventory system and may also be required as part of a company's annual audit. Sometimes, all the counting and valuing of inventory is not done on the last day of an accounting period, this is specifically true for larger businesses with too many items of inventory. In such a situation, inventory taking may take several days even after the statement of financial position date. And as a result, the inventory at the date of counting will certainly not be the same as the inventory on hand at the statement of financial position date unless inventory moments had not taken place during the period between the statement of financial position date of actual inventory taking. Summary for Study Session 9 In this study session, please note the following. 1. Any error made while valuing inventories makes the information reported in the final accounts untrue. Thus the effects of any possible error that can occur in inventory valuation on the items of the trading and income statement for any accounting period. 2. The ultimate goal of any enterprise carrying out inventory valuation should be to give a true and fair view of its state of affairs as at the statement of financial position date and the trend of the business trading results. 3. Since tax is paid out of the profit of an enterprise, the higher the profit, the higher the tax to be paid. A business enterprise that does not want to pay a higher tax may adopt a method of inventory valuation that will result in a lesser profit. 4. The cost of goods sold, gross profit, and net profit on the trading and income statement. The number of current assets, working capital, total assets, and owner's equity reported on the statement of financial position.